Every now and then in my angling career, I've stumbled across huge fish, but until now, it had never been roach. I've caught big roach, but never huge roach. I'd have loved it to have been a river, but it wasn't. It was a huge gravel pit. It's not where we are today, but it was a big expanse of water, and I'd come to learn there were big, big roach in there. It's all about location. If you can find them, you've got a chance. I have to say, I would like to say, in this instance, I turned up, looked at 100 acres of water, and with supreme watercraft, worked out where they are, but that would be a lie, and, and that's not reality. Reality was I spoke to carp anglers, people who had no vested interest at all in the roach, and they pointed me in the right direction. And um, pretty quickly, I was in the right area. They, they moved during the time that I fished for them, but to start with, they were in one particular spot. So I felt I had a really good chance. It was now or never, and I went there. And fairly quickly, I don't mean this to sound blasé, but fairly quickly I'd caught two pound roach and relatively quickly I'd caught the biggest roach I'd ever managed to attempt and that was three pound nine ounces. But I felt there was an even bigger opportunity of a haul of roach, something completely spectacular. And I was waiting for low pressure. We had had a period of high pressure for a long time and I was watching the weather and I see that it was going to fall away to under a thousand and at that point I, I don't know why but I just felt there's something special could happen then and I went there and I, I remember getting there not early because it would be an afternoon evening feeding spell I turned up there uh, probably 11 o'clock no one was fishing brilliant I could get in the area where I felt the roach still were I set everything up got the rods out and it was as if by magic is a squall come over it was high pressure it was calm and then all of a sudden the low pressure swept in and a squall come over and I, I remember the sheet of rain going across the big pit and I'm tucked out of the way under the brolly and with that click it's gone one's hooked itself and it's like yeah I've hooked this early because all the other fish I'd hooked had been right on dusk. This was um, probably two in the afternoon. So I thought they're feeding and I've got a feeding spell from then till dusk, which is five o'clock, so three hours. And in that period, I worked so hard to maximize that window. That was a window that maybe will never come along again in my lifetime. And I had seven roach over two and a half pound and four of them were over three, up to three, five. And it was just crazy. You, you just think, I've gone all this time without catching a three pound roach and there's just, they're coming in really easy, but it's just right venue, right time, right place, but timing. And the timing for that, I'm sure those roach were sitting there. I've watched them on other still waters. They, they actually sleep. They sit with their heads down and their tails up and they just hang there. And no matter what you do, you're never going to get a bite. You can be casting for them, you're never going to get a bite. All of a sudden, low pressure comes in, clicks, and they're willing to drop to the bottom. And that was the key. It was waiting for low pressure, and I got a catch of a lifetime. Ideally, I'd have loved to fish for the roach with a float. But the reality is, in a lot of situations, it just doesn't work. You can't sit there for hours looking at a tip. You can't cast it far enough. And I needed to cast a reasonable distance to catch these roach. So, I hate to say it, but I had to lean towards a carp angler's approach, which was bite alarms, bobbins, and a bolt rig. Now, experience has taught me how to set that up. So straight away, I was confident in the approach that I was fishing. I was using a one and a quarter pound Tesco rod. Now, that was crucial, not only for getting the distance, but also playing the fish. I couldn't go much more than that because with a bolt rig and a short hook length, you've got to be so careful. If you imagine a roach, it's just a sliver of skin and your hook's in there, just pull out. And I was always conscious from day one of trying not to lose a fish. And the way I fished, I didn't lose a single roach. So I started with a one and a quarter. I had a free spool style reel, 
because I would be fishing a bolt rig style and uh, you get a lot of drop backs but you'd be amazed how sometimes a roach will look itself and absolutely scream off so I needed that pre spool I fish with eight pound mepha feeder mono it's quite a robust line the reason I was doing that was not because a roach or a roach couldn't snap eight pound line it can't snap six pound line but I need to cast every 20 minutes. I want to keep my swim busy, keep recasting, keep recasting. And that obviously fatigues the line. And it's not just one session. You're not going to re-spool every trip. So you might be half a dozen trips. So I didn't want to fall. And all of a sudden, roach of a lifetime that I knew was on the cards and the line just part. So eight pound mepha feeder mono. And then to create the um, bolt rig, I fished with uh, a helicopter rig, really. And it's two small float stops pushed up onto the main line and then a small micro swivel and that rotates around the main line. Now if it was carp fishing I'd need something to protect the main line otherwise the friction of the swivel rotating as a fish pulled it would break it but with a roach it's not fighting that hard so I could have it directly on the main line. My hook length is very short and was very short pound suplex of fluorocarbon which is fairly stiff and you're only talking two or three inches I'll connect at one end a loop just an uh, overhand knot to create the loop and to the swivel it would just be loop to loop now that's a great way of changing it as soon as I felt the hook point dull but also the loop creates a little bit of a boom and helps kicks it away in the flight and I'll do a knotless knot and that just creates a lovely angle on a size 18 wide gape specialist hook and the angle is great so when they pick it similar to carp fishing tench fishing what i do pulls it into the bottom lip two red maggots nice and simple and then a float stop underneath so it's just trapped there now the feeder you'd think well it doesn't matter as long as you can get the distance that's all i'd care about but it, it wasn't i'd be fishing a really really tight line so i needed a feeder heavy enough to create that tight line without slipping, but also light enough not to create a problem when I hook the roach. Trust me, if you're playing a three pound roach, you are worried about everything because you know every head shake, the hook can fly out. So it was heavy enough, a 30 gram feeder bomb to tighten up to, it was heavy enough to reach the range I needed to go, which was on average 10 to 12 wraps for most of the places that I fished but it was also light enough not to cause a lot of issues dragging down on the mouth and ripping the hook out when I was playing the roach. And I was using a feeder bomb. And again, not all swim feeders are the same. A feeder bomb on a big gravel pit is absolutely brilliant because you get no wobble, it cuts through the wind, a big open expanse, it will fly straight and I, I don't want to be spreading the bait everywhere. I'd have everything tightened up, I'd cast out, sink the line, tighten it up and you want to fill the bobbin almost smacking back. If you pull it, it smacks back against the indicator. Roach come along, they see all the freebies and hopefully they take your hook bait. And I keep recasting, keep the swim busy, a little bit of smomming over the top and that was with a dark ground bait. I was using a canal ground bait that match anglers would use, which sounds crazy, but I don't want any feed in there. I didn't want to feed them up. I wanted them to just eat maggots. And my rig, bolt rig over the top, as I said, it wasn't the most traditional, wonderful of methods, but trust me, it's wonderful when you're holding a three pound roach.